Is President Trump conducting shadow foreign diplomacy? That's exactly what pundits in the mainstream media are reporting. In this video, we're going to take a look at the media's utter hysterics over Trump sending a special envoy abroad. We're going to see how all of this is part of what the media is calling Trump's shadow presidency. And stick with me to the very end of this video when I'll show you what Trump's shadow presidency reveals about the future of our nation. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you. As always, I am your daily fake news antidote as each and every day I provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, gang, you know on this channel, we talk a lot about building a parallel economy, what scholars have referred to as a parallel polys, where we intentionally support companies that support our values rather than support a bunch of woke corporations. And to that end, I want to give a huge shout out to PatriotSwitch.com. PatriotSwitch.com gives patriots the ability to walk away from woke corporations forever. PatriotSwitch.com was created to give you the opportunity to shop at family-owned, patriot-owned, made-in-America stores. They're absolutely wonderful. I mean, think about it. Wouldn't you love to no longer rely on the big woke corporations? Well, now you can make that independence a reality and transfer your dollars away from companies that despise our values and give them instead to family-owned companies for the future of our country. Thanks to PatriotSwitch.com. Again, that's PatriotSwitch.com. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. A number of news outlets are beginning to recognize that President Trump, though not officially in office, nevertheless continues to exercise what is technically referred to as a shadow government or a shadow presidency. The latest example of such comes in the form of Trump exercising what many media pundits are calling shadow diplomacy. Now, if you don't know, recently, President Trump released a statement that expressed frustration over the bumbling Biden administration's failure to fully implement the political and economic agreement that Trump's administration brokered between Serbia and Kosovo. So Trump wrote, quote, the great people of Serbia and Kosovo have overcome tremendous obstacles in their pursuit of economic normalization. The agreements my administration brokered are historic and should not be abandoned. Many lives are at stake. And here's the phrase that caught people's attention. Today, my envoy, Ambassador Rick Grinnell, visited the Kosovo-Serbia border to highlight this important agreement. Now, Rick Grinnell previously served as a special presidential envoy for Serbia and Kosovo peace negotiations during the Trump administration. Keep in mind, Serbia has never recognized, as I understand it, Kosovo's independence. So there's some significant tensions between the two. And what Trump did during his tenure is he focused on implementing a number of economic solutions that could be seen as advantageous for both sides, such as restoring air traffic between the two, railway services between the two countries. And the highlight of it all was when the leaders of Kosovo and Serbia met with Trump in the White House and they signed a historic agreement on economic, energy, and political issues. Unfortunately, these, these, uh, th those agreements have been abandoned by Bumble and Biden and have yet to be implemented. And so as Trump's statement makes clear, he sent his own special envoy, his own ambassador, Rick Grinnell, to the region to help get the process of implementing that agreement going. And so this is what has the media so up in arms of late. They're recognizing that Trump is in point of fact engaging in a de facto shadow diplomacy that's circumventing bumbling Biden's incompetence and his incontinence. Now, keep in mind, this is the same mainstream media that had absolutely no problem whatsoever with former Secretary of State John Kerry when he publicly claimed to be speaking with Iranian officials during Trump's administration. That was fine. Trump was ridiculous to suggest that Kerry had violated the Logan Act and the like. Now, this same mainstream media gave Kerry a total pass is now all up in arms about Trump sending Grinnell to the Serbia-Kosovo border. However, at one level, given that nobody cares what the mainstream media thinks anymore, well, all of that's just sound and fury signifying nothing in terms of the media's excoriating Trump. But at another level, what's going on here with Trump explicitly stating that he's sending an envoy ambassador to the region 
reveals something far deeper going on here. And we've talked about this in a couple of other videos over the last few months, but there really is an increasing recognition among the mainstream media that Trump is indeed running what they're calling a shadow presidency. They're also calling it a shadow government. Now, this, this, is, this term, shadow government, is actually a technical term. It tends to be a more European concept as part of their parliamentary systems in that like what we've seen in Italy of late, you need to have a government ready to go if their parliamentary majority collapses. So parliamentary majorities are multi-party and they can be very fragile. And in the British system, you have what's called shadow cabinets, which are made up of senior officials under the leadership of the opposition, who, while they don't have formal power, nevertheless, they're very effective in paralleling the ruling party's governance in that they publicly scrutinize the policies and actions of the majority government and offer their own in place of them. And then, in effect, they provide sort of a ready-made replacement that that majority government loses in a snap election or something of the sort. Well, that's, in effect, what the media is recognizing Trump is doing here. Almost under their nose, he has, over these last several months, effectively organized a parallel government that's actively directing the policies and advocacies of the new patriot-inspired Republican Party. So, for example, Mark Meadows, who is the chief of staff for President Trump, he openly talks about having what he calls regular cabinet meetings with the president. And he certainly ain't talking about bumbling Biden. And so the media, however reluctantly, is admitting that President Trump has, in fact, formed a de facto shadow government that is effectively directing the new patriot-inspired GOP and the policies that they are either advocating or enacting in their governance over the nation. In other words, there is a relatively widespread concern among the leftist activists disguised as journalists that President Trump is indeed effectively governing a significant portion of the nation through a combination of denouncing the Biden regime as inherently illegitimate and incompetent on the one hand, and radically influencing, if not indeed directing, GOP policies at the federal and state levels on the other. And now we're seeing Trump sending out de facto diplomats to help implement foreign policy. I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff. But when all said and done, it's indicative of the fact that our nation in many respects really has at least informally split apart. Red states have, in effect, basically seceded from leftist woke blue states. So, for example... The California state government allows its public workers to travel on official business to China, but not to Texas. They can go to North Korea, but they can't go to Florida. More travel bans have been implemented by blue states against red states than they have against dictatorial regimes throughout the world. Red and blue are more at odds politically with one another than the United States is with North Korea. And so the shadow presidency of Trump is basically a recognition that Trump remains the de facto leader of red states, while bumbling Biden can have all the shrinking blue states he wants. It's really a fascinating development, and it's one worth pursuing even deeper. So before you go, you will definitely want to check out my video on how Trump and the GOP have already seceded. You're going to find it absolutely fascinating. Leftists are actually making this argument. It's very interesting. So make sure to click on the link, and I'm going to see you over there. God bless.